one of the things that uh, the Hound of the Baskervilles does is to present us with a society in transition, one in which the ancient and the modern are having to reconcile themselves. And it does this in a way that doesn't obtrude into or distort the narrative. And there are two areas uh, where we can identify this. One is the changing nature of the order of society itself. The other is the encounter with the religious, uh, stretching the meaning of religious here to include everything that lies outside of the rational and explicable. We can look at it this way. The important action all takes place far from London, in the distant wilds of Dartmoor. This is where nature is at its most dark, its most ancient and atavistic, primitive, dangerous. This is where the original crime is committed, where the curse persists, where the elder Baskerville dies, where the ponies get drowned in the Grimpen Mire, where Stapleton eventually dies, where Selden the criminal seeks refuge and also dies. When once out upon its bosom, says Watson, you have left all traces of modern England behind you. But, on the other hand, you are conscious everywhere of the homes and the work of the prehistoric people. Baskerville Hall is a typical Gothic pile with twin towers, crenellations and ivy. It glimmers like a ghost at the end of the driveway. Both hall and landscape represent the repressed, the irrational, and all those ancient, dark, chaotic, subconscious urges of the human psyche. The city, especially London and the contemporary world in general, stand as a contrast, technologically advanced, rational, well-ordered, enlightened, modern. The social structure in terms of the class system remains intact, but the nature of the classes and the relationships between them is changing. The aristocrats and wealthy are still at the apex, with the working classes at the base, the servants, the peasants, Selden, etc. While in between is the middle class, expanding both in size and power, with Holmes and Watson and others as exemplars. The aristocrats are no longer the same as they were in Hugo Baskerville's time, which still retained a semi-feudal ethos. Lord Henry is a modern man with forward-thinking views. He is accustomed to a world of trade, commerce and advances in technology. He has been making a living in the New World, that is Canada, and even has a North American accent. And he intends to bring light to the darkness of Baskerville Hall. I'll have a row of electric lamps up here inside of six months and you won't know it again, with a thousand candle power Swan and Edison right here in front of the hall door. The working classes, though better off than their prehistoric ancestors, still occupy their lowly positions. Their traditional association with criminality continues, except that the progressive thinking of the upper and middle classes is brought to bear upon the fate of Selden. Following these new ideas that criminality is often the result of circumstances rather than innate wickedness, and accepting Mrs Barrymore's explanation that her brother's behaviour was a result of falling in with a bad lot, Holmes, Watson and Sir Henry agree to allow Selden to escape justice by leaving the country. Unfortunately for Selden, of course, this fails. If the aristocracy remain the hereditary guardians of the land, then the growing middle classes, as exemplified by Holmes and Watson, are its technocrats. They are the professionals and fixers, the new governors of society. The other element to look at is the religious. Doyle wrote this story at a time when society was becoming more secular and loosening its commitment to established religion, that is, Christianity. But although people were beginning to abandon the traditional forms of their faith, they weren't giving up their emotional need for some religious meaning to life. Hence their exploration of other established beliefs and alternative, even pagan ones. Conan Doyle himself, despite his scientific background and the vaunted rationality of his famous detective, nevertheless believed in the spirit world. The Gothic mode allows us, as readers, to experience the religious as if it were real, whatever our personal beliefs and however rational we think ourselves. We are tempted, just as the original readers were, to believe that the hound is real as a supernatural creature, 
because it fits into the legend and there seems at first no reasonable explanation for it. As with all tales of terror and horror, we permit ourselves the thrill of encountering the taboo, the repressed and dangerous, that which is both dark within ourselves and also at times transcendent, without having to acknowledge any allegiance to a specific form of faith. We suspend our disbelief in order to believe. We come away from that vicarious experience untainted and with a sense of relief at the re-establishment of mundane common sense. Just as Sir Henry intends to bring physical light to the land, so Holmes brings the enlightenment of rationality to the solving of the crime. In doing so he dispels the primitive supernaturalism of the curse and in exorcising the curse he becomes a form of priest or modern shaman a middle-class professional one at that. Aided by Watson, he heals the wound that for centuries has afflicted the Baskerville family and the land around them. Our characters enter the chaos of a Gothic world. They emerge from it with order restored. The social structure remains firm but renewed. The bloodline of the Baskervilles, freed from its ancestral curse, continues. Rationality has encountered the irrational, and conquered it. Light and enlightenment are brought into the darkness. And back in London, Holmes and Watson resume the pleasures of civilised urban society, opera and dinner at Marcini's.